The Winter Classic is today in Boston, and the Pittsburgh Penguins are the road team. Hunter Hodes of Locked On Penguins joins us to break down what this game means to the Penguins and give us the latest injury updates on that team. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could join us today. And thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. The Pittsburgh Penguins heading up to Fenway Park in Boston to take part in the Winter Classic. And Hunter Hodes joins us to discuss that. Happy New Year to you, Hunter. Yes, Happy New Year. And you know, I love the Winter Classic, and I'm glad the Penguins are back in it for the first time in quite a while. Yeah, it should be great to have them there and, and get some great national exposure. And Fenway Park couldn't ask for a better venue than that. Historic and, and exciting. But Tough time right now for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Four-game losing streak, some injuries affecting this team. Let's start with the injuries. Chris Letang uh, listed officially as day-to-day. Do you think he plays in the Winter Classic? It's a great question, Gil. Um, I would probably lean towards no. I don't know if they're having a full practice today. I feel like, uh, well, Sunday at least, I don't really think they're having one um, on the day that we're recording this. But I would probably say no just because, um, you know, it's day to day, but, you know, maybe they'll do something for a morning skate or something, or, you know, maybe they're practicing a bit later on in the day. But if I, if I have to take a guess, I think it's going to be um, a no. I don't really know how severe it is. It's day to day. So it's, you know, it's not, it's nagging enough that he had to miss the last game, but, you know, it obviously affected them you know, on the, on the back end, just because Jeff Petrie's also out. So that's two thirds of their right side are just not playing. I um, mean, Latang has, you know, been playing really well ever since coming back from that stroke um, in early December. So, you know, not having him out there would be a big loss. And I, I just, I don't expect him out there. Who is stepping up with Petrie and Latang out? How are they handling the right side? <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, Mark Friedman, you know, he's been playing some more minutes. I think he's been very serviceable in the last few games. He's like a perfect number six, number seven defenseman in the NHL. Um, kind of like a, well, he doesn't play like Chad Weedle, but they're kind of like the same type of defenseman where, you know, if they're your number six or number seven, <clears throat> I think you're doing something right. Um, Ty Smith was just called up. He played in his first game as a Penguin last game. Thought he played fine. Would I have him run the top power play next game? No, I think POJ or P, P, uh, P.O. Joseph, excuse me, um, should be running that, and I think you will see that change um, made there. Um, Chad Weedle, he usually would be on that right side, but he is also hurt right now day-to-day. So three of their uh, right-side defensemen are hurt. It's just a really bad time for it. You know, left side, though, Marcus Pedersen, I think, has really been playing well. Um, ever since he got up on that top pairing, you know, he's just been excellent for this team, and they're finally giving Joseph some more minutes um, thankfully, he has crushed every minute that he has played this season, and I think you will see him get more top four minutes <clears throat> um, in this one. But you know, for the right side, Jan Ruta, when he got when he got away from Brian Dumoulin, the results changed. And it's like, wow, he's not being brought down by the modern day version of Rob Scuderi anymore. <laughs> you put Mark Freeman up there on his natural side, even though he can play either one, that also works well. You know, Ty Smith, I think, can play on the right side as well. So, you know, they, they have options. It's just it's unfortunate that, you know, three of their mainstay righties are just out right now. So they have to move some of the lefties um, over to the to the other side. Always challenging when they have to do that. What what about the four game skid? And, and obviously, even before that, it's been a little bit of a struggle for this Penguins team. Why so hot and cold besides the injuries, which is an obvious reason? Yeah, I mean they, they were playing very well before this four game losing streak. I believe they went fifteen and three and two in their last twenty games, something like that. They was rattled off seven in a row, eleven of thirteen, something like that. But you know, it, it, these these stretches just come and go for teams. Um, it's a four game sample size, so I'm not reading too much into it. But you know, they still have stuff 
um, to clean up. I think the power play really doomed them against the Devils. Nine power play opportunities. They got outscored one nothing. That's embarrassing when you have all that talent up there. I think that's the main reason they lost. Credit to the Devils' penalty kill for getting the job done. But the Penguins, I think, gave that game away. Islanders won. I think they just laid an egg. You know, that's you know, people always talk about how the Islanders have given them fits over the years, and I'm like, yeah, that's well past. You, you can go well back before 1993 to see that happen, and I don't want to talk about that on on this. Um, you know, then the kid, the, the two games against Carolina, um, you know, 50 50s that they just lost. They should have won that game at home about 10 days ago, if I recall correctly. They just gave up that goal with four minutes left, lost in overtime. The one before that, um, <clears throat> they lost. Um, in Raleigh, you know, that, 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 that happens, uh, sometimes. So, you know, they just, they got to get back on track here. Um, it doesn't help that the injuries are really killing them. And, but, you know, it also doesn't help that, you know, Brian Dumoulin has really just been costing this team goals whenever he's on the ice. Um, it's, it's gotten to the point where he's probably not even playable right now, but they have no choice because they have so many defensemen hurt. So, you know, they got to get healthy first and foremost. Their five-on-five five scoring is mostly fine, but when the top six isn't doing their thing, you leave it to the bottom six. And with how Ron Hextall designed a team where he wants it to be very low-event hockey, sometimes the bottom six is not going to pick up the slack. So, you know, that's, I think, been part of their struggles um, these last few games. Um, and I'll be curious to see if any of that changes on Monday against who I think is the best team in hockey in the Boston Bruins. Yeah, they certainly do look that way. Is, is there any player? I mean, look, Sidney Crosby, Danny Malkin, these guys have been in a number of outdoor games already. It's probably old hat for them. But are there any players on this roster that this game will be a very big deal for, or maybe because it's in Boston will be a big deal for? I muted myself there for a second. We can probably just screw that up. Um, but no, um, I think Brian, this is actually probably a big game for Brian Dumoulin. It's funny, you know, I, I don't mean to dump on him so much because he has played such great hockey over the years here for the Penguins. But, you know, he's from uh, the New England area. I think he's probably going to have a lot of friends and family there. He's going to want to try to put on a show for them and have his best game of the season. I definitely think this is a big game for him. Mike Sullivan as the head coach. He is also from the Boston area, coached the Boston Bruins in his um, his first NHL head coaching gig. So I definitely think this is big for him. Obviously, if you go off the ice, who owns the Penguins Gill? The Fenway Sports Group. So this is kind of a big homecoming for them. You know, Fenway Park, they own the Red Sox. They're playing at there. You know, they own the hockey team. So that's obviously a pretty good wrinkle. Those are the two that really <clears throat> jump out to me right away with Mike Sullivan and Brian Dumlin, you know, Sid, obviously, you know, the last winter classic that he played in, you know, we, you know, or one of them, you know, we all know what happened in that when we suffered the concussion. Um, so, but, you know, the year before that, we also saw what happened, well, two years before that, excuse me, we also saw what happened in Buffalo when he had the shootout winner, um, which was probably, I think, one of the best moments of the Sid Gino era, to be honest. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to this. I, I I love watching this on TV. I will never go to a Winter Classic game because I wouldn't want to sit out there in the cold, and I also think it's way too far away to see the puck. Uh, I probably wouldn't even know what's what's going on, to be honest. But I do think, you know, especially for Dumoulin and Sullivan, and just honestly the core players as a whole, just because they haven't played a Winter Classic in a while, I, I, I think this is a really big deal. Yeah, it should be a, an entertaining game, and we're all looking forward to it. Hunter, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners – where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. The show's Twitter is at LO underscore Penguins. You can find the show wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, um, Amazon Music now, uh, ad free on there. So you can go check that out. And, you know, we'll have another, ep we'll have an episode right after the game ends. All right, looking forward to that. Hunter Hodes, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Our next partner has a product I literally use every day. I started taking AG1 because I'm not a great pill taker, and I wanted to be able to take something that didn't involve taking five, six, seven pills a day in order to get the nutrition that I need. So what is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics and adoptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports 
your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. And it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and buy free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance.